Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Train Your Dog Month. I'm Petrina Firth from the APDT and I am joined by Chris Mancini tonight. Hi Chris. Hi Petrina, good to see you. So Chris, um, you've been with the APDT a long time. A long time, I'm <laughs> a old. long time. Um, if people haven't seen you on these lives before, because this will be your third appearance <gasps> this month. Sick of the sight of me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, why don't you just tell people a little bit about what you do and what you love about dog training and what dogs you love and stuff? So, so I, I now reside up in Cumbria. I moved up here seven years ago. Um, previous to that, I was in North London, where I predominantly worked in a veterinary surgery for nearly thirty years, but ran dog training classes as puppy pals um, down down in Enfield, Cruise Hill in Enfield, um, met a lot of good old people and got got um, railroaded, not really, into going on the committee and stuff. And then I now train up here, full-time dog trainer up in Cumbria. And yeah, I just, I love the whole training thing because I just love how it's evolved so much over, over time and how you just still, we're still learning, aren't we? Even though I'm old, I'm still learning different things and just just yeah just getting little snippets of bits and bobs and yeah it's a great networking type thing to because <sighs> all we help us help the dogs that's me really pretty boring oh bearded collies are my thing i've got two of them behind me here i've got working beardy and a and a cross border beardy mutt sitting looking aloof behind me on the sofa but you can't quite see her i don't think <laughs> She's giving me a dirty look. Which one's that then? Betsy. Betsy. Yeah, she's Betsy. She's going, oh. that's that sort of woman. Because um, <laughs> you and I sort of met quite a lot on the uh, event conference circuit over the years, didn't we? We'd go to yeah. Clicker Expo and yeah. Worth and things like that. And yeah, lots, lots yeah. of change. So got to, yeah, got to know you through then. And then, yes, and then we must have railroaded you onto the committee and I got to know you a bit better. Oh, actually, and then you came on our education course, didn't I? Then I really did get to know you. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, maybe you quite a while. Great. Um, so tonight you're going to be talking about retrieves, which is one of your favourite things to talk about, I think. And I, uh, I learnt how to get little Sunday, the French Bulldog, to not just go and get the thing, but actually bring it back to me, all the way back to me, to here, to my hand. So you're going to be talking a little bit about that, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, yep. Great. Well, we've got lots of nice comments. Um, Sandy says... <laughs> Sandy says, oh, God. Thought I'd better tune in this time as I miss the others. Sandy is Chris's <laughs> best friend, by the way, so that's what friends are for, right? No. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> you, you can put as rude a comment as you like, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, Georgia said legend, Mancini right. minion here. Legend, you're not a minion anymore, my love. You're far oh. superior. Right. And, um, and Joe's just got a lot of love for your dog, Betsy. So uh, there we are. Yeah, Betsy, somebody loves you. Joe loves you. <laughs> She's very pretty, Chris's dog, Betsy, you know. Yeah, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed of dogs, isn't she, sort of? Yeah, yeah, she is. <laughs> ah, great. All right, well, if you're ready... Yeah, I'm good to go. I will hand over to you. Oh, where are we? Well, I know when you... Yeah, you're yeah. there if you want to share your screen. That's there. So have I got to press... Oh, it's there. Yeah, right. press present. Play. So, play. Yeah, is that right? Can you all see that? Perfect. We can see that brilliantly. Cool. So this is me. I decided to do a presentation because I thought it might be a bit easier. And yeah, this is where I am now. We do classes and one-to-ones. I've got a lovely big three-acre field up on Berkeley Common and people that know me will know stunning views and wonderful on a nice day. And in actual fact, that's Mabel and uh, Finn up in the field. Um so I've been training for many, 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 many years and I'm old. At any rate, we don't need to know any more about that. So we will get going and talk about retrieve, okay? 
I look at how to teach retrieve and actually to teach retrieve to dogs that either reluctant to retrieve, have had bad experiences with retrieving, or we try too hard, or they're not natural retrievers, etc. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you want a really formal retrieve for obedience or just uh, save my back and bending down to pick something up. Why retrieve? Because it's fun. It is useful. As I said, it saves, saves you bending down. You can teach loads of different tricks with it. You know, tidy your toys away, put the ball in a net. If the dog can hold something, you can, they can hold the net and you can chuck the ball in the net. It's really useful and one of the core skills for assistance dog work um, where people with physical abilities need, need, need some help. So the dog will be picking up all sorts of items, often named, um, and again, emptying washing machines, filling washing machines. So yeah, really a, a really important skill for that. Um, obedience. So you have, you know, you throw your dumbbell out and um, the dog has to come back into you and sit in front of you in a present before you take the article off it. So that's a little bit more formal. But again, the way I teach retrieve, it doesn't matter how you want to do it. This will get this will get you there. And it, even if you've got a little French bulldog like Sunday that Petrina has that really isn't yet the typical dog that you'd think would would want to do a retrieve. And actually, I've got a lovely picture of a wonderful little dog at the end of this um, that you'll see doing a beautiful retrieve. Um, yeah, working trials, lo lots of the dog sport re require some kind of um, retrieve. It's also useful because it can help prevent resource guarding if you teach the dog to bring stuff back to you instead of chasing around after it and trying to get stuff off it. Quite a useful exercise to teach the gun dogs. So there's all different types of retrieves. So there's one where they bring it to you and give it to you in your hands, as in gun dog or obedience. And then there's retrieving when they're just bringing something back and putting it to a receptacle somewhere else. So that might not be you. It might be a box in the corner of the room. It might be a basket somewhere else. Um, and as in retrieving for assistance work, they might be loading the loading the washing machine or filling the basket, emptying the washing machine and filling the basket. Um, and then you've got the more formal types of retrieve, like obedience, where they've got to deliver to your hand. It's also used um, for an indication in search and rescue and also in some assistance dog work, where they have something called a br brinsel attached to their collar and they're taught to whip it up and carry it in their mouth. So for search and rescue, it's often an orange thing and they flip it up when they found somebody and run back to their handler to say, hey, guys, follow me back. I found a person. And again, assistance dog, sometimes it's just like a tag that hangs down on their collar and they swing it into their mouth to go and get help for their for their human. So, yeah, great lot of different uses of retrieves and there'll be far more than I've written down here. Um, I'm sure you can think of some more. Anyway, so we'll start with a bit of troubleshooting. Why, why, why things might go wrong sometimes. And, and fairly typically, particularly with your gun dog breeds that like to have something in their mouth and carry things. For example, those wonderful cocker spaniels that love socks in particular. We often nag them to give things up. Um, we chase them around, try and open their mouths and remove things. So we often teach them, actually, they're not even going to come back anywhere near us to to give anything back. So 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 it starts pretty young, pretty much as soon as, as soon as we get them home. Sometimes when it's taught in a more traditional way, where we not we, but where people used to literally pop things. Well, they probably still do. I don't know. Pop things in their mouth and try and hold their mouth shut to teach them. You need to hold and keep hold of it. It can cause an aversion to picking things up and holding things. And then we've got the dogs that really aren't a natural retriever. And it actually can be a retrieving type breed sometimes, believe it or not. They're just, yeah, they're just not naturally inclined to pick things up. Um, and then when you have got dogs that really like uh, 
holding things in their mouth. I don't necessarily want to give them up. So that can also be a problem. Anyway, that's so that's some of the troubleshooting things. And because kind of a combination of all this, I've I've um got lots of different different ways and different uh things that I put into building up my retrieve, which I'll tell you about in a minute when I tell you about Finn, my non-retrieving dog. So if you're doing something that so the retrieve is not as simple as people think, you know, they often people often say, Oh yeah, my dog retrieve because it will run out and chase something and bring it back within the vicinity of you but actually that's not really a retrieve as such because the dog's just naturally running out after something and bringing it back a bit and then it might get bored with it and it doesn't actually understand the full process if we're doing a more formal retrieve you might have a sit sit next to you remain sitting while the article is placed or thrown out or in the case of gun dogs shot from the from the air and landing um, and then the dog has to wait until you send it out to the article. They have to pick up the article. They have to hold the article, return with the article, possibly sit to present the article and then release the article to the hand or receptacle. And then again, maybe finish. So come around and sit by your side again. So that's quite a lot of different components involved. And you can break it down and make it much much easier for the dog to learn what's required and then you can fine tune it all and put it all together so we're going to run through the different things i do to um to get there so i like to mix it all up don't have to train in any particular order at all to start with you can just work on different bits and you might just say right i'm only concentrating on this little bit at the moment so you might be just concentrating on sending the dog out um, and it doesn't really matter whether it gets all the way back, etc. Um, and then I like to create patterns with different different sorts of games that, that, that we play to basically get the dog going out, coming back, going out, coming back. And often I won't even use, there won't be any retrieve or holding involved in this bit at all. And again, you'll see that later on. And make sure you use what the dog wants as a reinforcer because it's not always what we think they want it's not always food um we can do a bit of shaping it as well and then we put it all together and we polish it all up to a lovely retrieve so i haven't had a puppy for a long long time well of my own and i decided to get a puppy all this time last year in actual fact i probably had finn a couple of weeks then and um we were just messing about playing up in the field and um, I suddenly realised he'd, he'd grabbed something and ran off across the other side of the field with it. I'm like, no. And if I tried playing with him at home, no, off I go. Not interested in interacting with you. I was like, oh, great. I've got a dog that doesn't want to retrieve. But I wasn't too worried. Um, and, I, and I didn't rush anything. Ten months later, we've now got a perfect retrieve. So let's have a look. But how we do it and what the sorts of things I put into it. So this video I'm going to show you is just it's, it, it's thin now, but I would just explain without sound on hopefully. So this is what he used to do. He'd go away, but he'd actually go away much, much further. And 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 initially all I would do was I, I'd have the other dogs, but I was doing a bit of filming and they weren't there. And I'd be playing with the other dogs. So eventually he'd be like, oh, what's going on over there? So you can see I'm not trying to get him. I'm just kicking the ball about by myself. Sad, sad old person that I am. And he's absolutely, considering he's um collie, he's absolutely rubbish at switching. Maybe would have switched straight onto that ball and, <laughs> and be there like going, oh, yeah. So that's the sort of thing that I was doing <laughs> just to get, and that's Mabel shouting because I said her name um him oh he goes okay maybe i will come and play with that so as i say not making a big issue of it not nagging them to come just messing around and going and playing with the other ball pretty casual and laid back so the other game that i did quite a lot of with finn and 
this is Mabel here in actual fact, is something called the two toy game. And this is really useful because it's quite useful for dogs that don't like to release easily to teach them a cue to release basically. And what we do here is we... the other one so I can start playing with it. Yeah, it's get right. I'll turn my voice down because I can't stand the sound of my own voice. So basically, I started off with two what I call lower grade identical toys. Okay, so I engage the dog in tugging, tug, tug, tug. Then I stop playing, say that my word drop or whatever my release cue. I think it's thank you for her. It's all right. We ended on on that fairly quickly and. Let me just pause it for a second while I just explain it a bit more. Um, get them engaged, tug, tug, tug. Then I either stop playing or drop and, and say the word, whatever I want to use as their release cue, drop, thank you, whatever. And then start wiggling about the other toy. Okay, and so, so that they go, oh, actually, I want to play with that one. Mabel's quite into her playing, as you'll see from this. Um, did it, has it started again? Oh, it looks like it must have started again. I didn't pause it. Anyway, so yeah, I've let go of that toy, got that one. Oh, ho, ho. okay, we'll play with that one now. I'm not nagging the drop. I'll just say it once and wait for her to release. I'm just swapping toys. So now I've upgraded my toys here and I've got like a ball on a rope. So again, getting her engaged, having a good old, good old game of tuggy. So we tug, 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 and then I'll probably in a minute say drop. Oh, oh she dropped at any rate. <laughs> no, let's get her on it again. And then I'll say the word drop and I'll just start playing with this one. And can you see I'm dragging it on the ground a little bit and, and doing it that way rather than shoving it in her face? Because again, they like to, to chase things a little bit. So I'll pick up the other one, and start playing with that. If you're going to start this game, if you have got a puppy that's not keen on interacting with you too much or wants to go off, you're better to start it in a smaller area, okay, so a smaller room even, so that they haven't got too much choice to go too far away, okay, and you can entice them to come back and play with you. And then I think we move up to our super, and so did you see there, I paused, waited a while for her, I said her drop cue, just waited for her to let go, so the toy goes dead, so it's not moving. Woohoo, well done. Um, and then we moved on to, that's it. She's like, all right, I might as well release it then because you ain't playing with that one anymore. And so the, here she is having a good old tug on the toy. And then I think I'm going to switch them for her favouritest ones, which are furry, furry tuggy things. When she gets really excited, she's like, she really struggles to let go. It's like, it's really hard. It's really hard. Oh, my God, I don't know if I can do it. Oh, and I've stopped there. Obviously, didn't want to bore you too much. Then I moved on to, like, the, the toys that she really loves. Um, and that's how you teach your release cue, which is actually kind of the last part of your retrieve if you're doing something informal. So this one, I was saying earlier about creating a pattern, and one really nice way of creating a pattern Touch. Yes. is hand touches, okay? Because the dog's driving in, I'm marking it for touching my hand, and then I'm chucking the treat out quite far, because I want that go out, come back pattern. So he's only going out for a treat at the moment. He grabs this tree. He's not actually very foodie, but he must have been on a, I'll eat the treats that today. Comes running back in, touches my hand, chuck a treat right out. So that is kind of just mimicking the retrieve pattern that you'll have when you're sending your dog out to pick something up and come back. Yeah. Dogs quite kind of quite like predictable patterns and, and they learn them really well. So this is one little game that, that you can play. He's lost his treat. That you can play yeah. to um, create those patterns and that again they're really easy to do and you can sit in your living room and do it like a little bit of armchair training yeah. oh. 
and what I'm also doing now and what I had to add on for him to get him to retrieve the hand if you watch he would come back like that and then I would ask him to touch the article in my hand okay so I, I did that as a separate exercise so this is before he'd quite got it so that's what he'd so that's what he'd do he'd come in and then I'd ask to touch and eventually he's touching which is what I call my mix and match thingy I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute so that's creating patterns so then the next part of the retrieve, and again, you can do this with um, tiny puppies. And I, I probably have got a video somewhere, but I couldn't find one. So I, I re-videoed I re it for today, is what I call marking the pounce. So engaging the dog in a little bit of play, again, in a smaller area, and then marking it with my yes as he pounces onto it so i'm not worrying about him turning around coming back or anything else we're literally just marking him pouncing so i'm saying you ready 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 and then in a minute i'll chuck it a bit yes so mark him for pouncing it brings it back it doesn't matter but if he doesn't it doesn't matter because i've marked it and again so yes. for, for dogs that aren't too keen on play you might you might even need to up it a bit and run around with a toy on the end of a lead or something like that to really get them engaged and grabbing and then you're going to mark them when they grab i'm holding his collar there that's why he was a bit <laughs> in case you think oh you can't see me holding his collar i don't think just to get him a little bit more like oh you ready 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 you're gonna get it so that's marking yes. the pounce. So no hands are getting involved. I'm not trying to get it off him. I'm not asking for him to deliver the hands. I'm just marking him going out and putting his mouth on it. And this is quite a good little game for dogs that are reluctant to put their mouth on stuff. Now, this is a, a, a nice little, another nice little exercise for creating a go out comeback pattern from my lovely gun dog friends. Um, which it involves it doesn't have to involve a place board it can involve the dog sitting sitting down um and i'm chucking food in that bowl and then um going back sending the dog out and then getting him to come straight back good boy that's a nice seat good boy into well the done it's a bit windy up there i'll turn that down and then repeat repeat now all these pattern games the hand touch the um the, the the food bowl games they're all actually quite useful for your recall as well okay because you're just creating that come back pattern come back pattern and paying into a food bowl is a lovely way to um get the dog to come back to you So here we go, loading, loading it up. So, and again, you're, you're also starting to build up on the dog sitting next to you until you release it and sending it out. So you're getting all these extra bits in already and, and there's no retrieve article still involved in it. All right, that's that one. So this is us. So you must bear in mind, obviously, she says, it might not be obvious. So you, you don't just go out and do all this in one day. It doesn't all it doesn't all come together in one day. It, it actually took me oh, about 10 months to get to get a proper retrieve to um, from Finn. Not I, I could have, I probably could have got it quite a lot quicker if I'd actually done some some more training with him. But I wasn't in a rush. I don't want to put pressure on him and I wanted him to just enjoy being a being a dog. So yeah, it, it took that long. But yeah, so so this is I would have done a few more sessions of the hand targets in and out and and that food bowl exercise in and out before I moved on to trying it out. Yeah, so because we've created a pattern in his mind, I'm sorry, I'm just turning it down because it's so windy. Um, and it's harder for him now because he's more into his toys. 
So he goes flying out, does a yes. beautiful pounce, and actually, Get it. I wouldn't Ooh. normally even bother putting my yeah. hands in, and quite often at, that, at this stage, I will still feed into a food bowl. But he's actually, <laughs> yes. he's actually more Good into um, yes. toys, as you can see, than he uh, okay. than he is into his food. I'm just going to open my door, guys, while you watch that and let Maybelline, because she's going to be shouting. Oh, you're a pest. Turn it down. Right. And then I think I upped it to um, a dummy. And see, he struggles, he struggles a bit more. So more, more, more work required on um, his steadiness, shall we say. And he'd probably get marked down if he was doing obedience for running onto the article like that it's not quite as smooth a drop off but again you can just work on all those bits separately and i'm not that fussed about it so it doesn't matter so because he loves his toys so much i need to use toys as his reinforcers as you can see he's like woohoo but i want him to be excited about stuff so i don't care about any of that so he goes out and he comes back because we've we've created that yes. pan if if it didn't Whoa. fall into my hands and it's not as you can see he's still not doing a formal sit and what present at the boy. moment because i'm just pleased that he's delivering to hand so then the next things that i would do if i do want to do a little bit more formal stuff is is the shaping part of it previously when i first started doing retrieve many many years ago i actually just shaped it but some some sometimes it can be quite hard because uh we get we sometimes we sometimes mark the wrong thing we we mark the release so the dog thinks it's just hold spit hold spit hold spit um and it's quite arduous i think for some dogs whereas the, the way i do it now is a little bit more fun and you I haven't, we haven't found a dog yet that we haven't managed to teach to retrieve in some form or other. Right, so this is shaping. And for some reason, the video quality on this isn't as good. So all I'm doing at the moment, and I'm good using boy. a place board, is shaping the present part. So no retrieve article. So what I'm doing is proofing him sitting in front of me, basically, and paying him for sitting while... I'm moving about and doing funny things to him. So this is like just shaping the last part of the exercise. And then I'm going to start seeing, can you do a chin and rest your chin? Because they've got what well, if you do want that that final posh present bit, then you want the dog to sit in front of you <laughs> and understand the concept of sitting still, holding yes. something in its mouth. Because that's a bit slightly weird for them again to start with not to race back and just spit it out like he was doing earlier. Yes. And for some reason, he decided he'd do his chin rest Good with boy. a paw up. So that's that. We don't want to watch it to death. So um, nice. we can move on to the next bit. And I'm chucking treats behind because actually Mabel was sitting Good on the sofa boy. behind. And wow. it's probably harder chin. for her to... Um, Sit on the sofa got watching. I've got a chin in the paw. Chin in the paw. But we're not bothered about that. Chin. Yeah, so while he's resting his chin, yep. I'm just doing other stuff. So, so it's kind of, this Don't is a, pr a proofing part of your, sure. your shaping the behaviour you sure, want. Ah. Right. And then, and then the next part of the exercise is adding the article in so it's behind me back now i went i went up and got it so this yes. is just some random thing good boy so although he can come back and give it to me i want him to eventually yes. be able to sit and good lad. so we've had it we've had nice. we've probably had about four or five That's sessions of this i think before i did this video um that's a pretend stick I'm using. Yes, very nice, mister. So I'm just marking him for... Yes, 
Super. Holding, and then Mabel's going to come Super. in and mess it all up. You lose it, miss. It's behind you. She's like, where's my tree? I thought I was, yeah, she's supposed Mabel. to be laying down on the sofa. But I thought, well, it's adding to the proofing for Finn, so we'll just leave it there. Yes. <laughs> Slat. That was very nice. Shall we start saying thank you now? So he actually grips oh, it a bit harder so because Mabel's behind him. I wasn't disappointed in that. He's it's like, like she's not having it, it's mine. So she, he, she yes. actually aided my, aided my proofing a little really bit. Thanks, nice. Mabel. Um, and so that's your final bit. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so even though I was holding it, I wanted him to wait till I'd given him his mark. I could, I, and, and thank Thanks. you to to release it. So, yeah. we don't need to watch anymore. Good so girl. Thing, do we know? <laughs> and does that matter? No, what happened? not at all. What happened? He says, I dropped it. I dropped it doesn't it. matter. What are we going to do? Oh, clever. Oh, we fell off. And Mabel decided she'd get on. <laughs> right. I obviously didn't shorten it. So, this is that wonderful little dog, Pippin, belongs or belongs to Callum, and she was a fabulous little retriever. And this is a picture of her running along with a dumbbell in her mouth. So there we go. Thank you, Chris. That was wonderful. That, my retrieve talk. <laughs> Yeah, so was... I feel, oh my God, I, maybe I packed too much in and people are thinking, what the heck? But it isn't a lot of work. It, it's not as bad as it sounds. It's really easy stuff to do. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people, they get the retrieve wrong, don't they? Because they sort of try and lump it all in together. And what you're really good at is breaking it down and not exclusively like back chaining it, but doing little bits here and little bits there. So the dog gets the concept much better. And then there's no pressure as well because if we start putting pressure on them, it, like that's when it all goes wrong, and it's like mm. you know, casual with it. Um, we had some funny comments. So um, comments. Where was it? <laughs> oh no, I mean nice, nice comments. Where was it? <laughs> there it is. Laura, she said we used the retrieve to pass the remote control between us. So oh, real life uh, use. Okay absolutely yes thank you i didn't think of that one laura <laughs> um and jacqueline said uh, i saved this video so i can follow your training techniques jacqueline oh, cool. smallwood with okay. the dalmatian yes yeah, yeah. um go no questions no questions i think you must have been so thorough that That's people are like well i've I've got it now. Right, it is Friday evening. I'm not really, not really thinking God. Pick. But anyway, if anybody watches it back later and they've got any questions, they can all, all always give me a nudge in there, can't they? And I'll, I can yeah, I guess. I don't know how it works. Um. Uh, just another little comment there from Jazz. That was great. Thank you. My colleague loves chasing after toys and balls, but not so much bringing them back. Been trying to teach drop it and he's not keen. This way seems much more fun for him. Yeah, it is. And the thing with Collie's um, jazz is that's what they tend to do. I don't if if you go back to the first video where because they're a herding breed, they they want to control the movement. So yeah, it's uh, so doing it this way, you'll you'll have much more much more joy at uh, get get it, getting it uh, to back back to you instead. Yeah, because they're just like I just want to control that movement. Yeah, I could like I could see that a little bit with Finn actually when you were I'm playing with the ball and I'm ignoring you but I'm just playing by myself. He was kind of interested in making it stop a bit but not so much like you'd see from a border collie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas Mabel's much more much, well she's half collie though Mabel, like half border collie. Whereas whereas he's allegedly full working beardy, so I guess maybe that is a slight difference, I don't know. If if people don't know, what's the difference between the two types of collies? What jobs do they have? Is that the difference? They both work sheep, but they work them differently. Um, so the bearded collies tend to use their gob quite a lot. They'll go they'll go much bigger distances as well, I think. Um, whereas the border collies use their eye a lot more to 
control stuff than the, 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 like the beardies do. That they, they, they'll be shouting a bit. Uh, bearded collies are notoriously loud, and I can I can attest to that. <laughs> they do like the sound of their voices, don't you, Finn? <laughs> yeah. So yes, yeah, just it's a way. So they're they're all herding breeds, but they just do it slightly differently. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we've just got nice comments, basically. Um, yep. Jacqueline, fab presentation, favourite tutor. <laughs> Jude said, always great to see you train. Oh, yeah. thanks. No, it's good. Yeah, I love doing retrieve. So, yeah, it's a nice fun to... Because there, is... there, are, there are so many bits to it, aren't they? And it's not just fetch. You know, that you can also use it in lots and lots of different ways. So... Oh really naturally do it and you don't have to teach them anything at all mm. um they are probably the ones more likely to be reluctant to release so again then you'd have to go back and do like the two toy game and you know just get a much more stronger and that's a little bit about arousal up and down as well so controlling their arousal level so we kind of play calm to crazy games with that as well so mm. we get them up and then calm down so it's, it's them learning to manage themselves if that makes sense um mm. so the release release the items so yeah it's, it's... yeah and i think that two toy i mean my partner thinks i'm mad because whenever i buy dog toys i always buy two <laughs> always it doesn't matter how much they are either like there's always going to be two um yeah, I... <laughs> but for some dogs if you get the food out to try and get the drop, they then just, well, I just want the food. And so doing that two toy drop, it just changes it so that they're not so reliant on food, you know, and you can just do it whenever, you know, really like yeah. it. And if you've got something like a Malinois, that food ain't going to do it anyway. Even another toy won't do it. You've got to strip that right back. And because mm. I've got one at the moment, <laughs> doesn't want to release. <gasps> but you've got a, a toy. Toys are so useful for those dogs that you just like, we need to get this sorted. So, yeah, we're working on it. Well, yeah. So, yeah, it, so it's, it's an opposite end of the spectrum. But, yeah, you're right. And quite often, if the dog knows you've got food, it's it's like, no, I'm not going to bother with the art. So it's making it really clear that your behaviour is dependent. And that's, again, sometimes we need to strip it back because sometimes the dogs just don't get it. Well, I know the food's there. But then that, again, is where using our marker word is so useful because it pinpoints it. You haven't got to have the food on you. You can get up and go and go and get it and not have that alluring food smell all over you. So the dog's like, no, can't do it, can't do it. Just want the food, just want the food. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought you got many Malinois up in Cumbria, but that's my southern stereotypes. <laughs> Sorry. Is. Is that, are, there <laughs> many, are there many up there? There are quite a few. We've probably got about, oh, we've got two, we've had two through classes this, these last few months. So, yeah, mm. that's, oh, that's, that's enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love them. They're great. They're great. Yeah. A lot of dog. It's a lot of dog to work. A lot of dog. <laughs> it's a lot right. of dog. I'm not sure I want to live with one. <laughs> no. Yeah. I need to get off my butt a bit more and do some more, wouldn't I? <laughs> Yeah, like I said to uh, Martina last night about I wouldn't own a collie because it'd be cleverer than me, you know. I think, uh, be a bit I think like... most, most breeds are cleverer than us, really, aren't they? I had, a, I had a Tibetan Terrier yesterday. Oh, my God, what a little cracker. What a little cracker he was. Smart as anything. But these guys, look, that's it. They're all crashed in the evening and they haven't had loads today because I've been busy. Yeah. So that's good. All right, perfect. Well, I mean, we've got some comments. Yeah, the Twitleys have retrieved their last birds of the season. So there's a the little working retrievers. So they'll be having a nice little rest and catch up with a walk then. Maybe you'll be able to catch up with your, your buddies again. Hmm. Cool. All right, Chris, do you want to add anything else to, to the retrieves before I let everyone know what's going on tomorrow? No, I don't think so. I think I think tell them what's happening tomorrow. Perfect. So tomorrow at six o'clock, we've got Faye Moffat Edwards, APD team member, and she's going to be talking to us about deaf dogs. She's got two blind, sorry, deaf, get it right, 
Two Deaf Dalmatians. Uh, she's got a great presentation that I've had a look through. Some really cool little videos. So come back at six tomorrow and you can watch her. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely Friday night and have a great weekend. Hope to see some of you tomorrow. Cheers. Bye.